the number of the sons of God. How a scrap of skin resolves a Bible chronology mistake. In the biblical book of Genesis, the prophet Moses summarized the history of 70 Near Eastern nations. Genesis chapter 10 lists 70 clans that descended from Noah and his sons. Genesis chapter 11 recounts how that God scattered the clans, which became 70 nations. Genesis chapter 12 reveals how, about a hundred years later, God promised to bless all the nations through Abraham's descendants, the Israelites. In the biblical book of Deuteronomy, the prophet Moses summarized in a poem how that God had apportioned land to seventy non-Israelite nations. Standard Bible translations read, When the Most High gave to the nations their inheritance, when he divided mankind, he fixed the borders of the peoples according to the number of the sons of Israel. For nearly two millennia, scholars have been aware that the ancient Greek translations of Deuteronomy 32.8 read a little differently. Whereas the oldest Masoretic Hebrew manuscripts read, The Sons of Israel, all Greek manuscripts read either Sons of God or Angels of God. Prior to the 20th century, Bible commentators, following either the Hebrew Sons of Israel or the Greek Angels of God, invented various interpretations. Those who try to interpret the phrase, the number of the sons of God, knowing it to be an anachronism, invented different meanings for it. Poole wrote, The posterity of Canaan, which was accursed of God, should be seated in the country which God intended for the children of Israel, that so, when their iniquities were ripe, and God's time came, they might be rooted out, and the Israelites might come in their stead. Until the proper heirs existed, and were at an age, and of sufficient number to inherit. Benson commented, God disposed of the several lands and limits of the people, so as to reserve a sufficient place for the great numbers of the people of Israel. Commentators who were aware of the Greek translations dismissed these as a corruption of the Hebrew original. Pulpit Commentary noted, The Septuagint has an arbitrary departure from the original text in accommodation, probably, to the later Jewish notion of each nation having its guardian angel. Ellicott commented, the seventy translate, He set the bounds of the peoples according to the number of the angels of God. The chosen people were to be his messengers to the nations, interpreting angel to mean Israelites. Barnes noted that a change from Israelite to angel was, quote, possibly suggested by an appreciation that the literal rendering might prove invidious to the many Gentiles who would read the Greek version. And the annotated Bible commented, The Septuagint translated, taking into account the sons of God, or angels, supposing that each nation had an angel as its chief, whilst Israel had God himself as its chief. All this began to change in September of 1952 when a parchment fragment was found in Cave 4 of Qumran, containing four words from Deuteronomy 32, verses 7 and 8. Consider, allotted, sons, and God. This makes it certain that the Greek translation, sons of God, or angels of God, was translated from the earlier form of the Hebrew text of Deuteronomy 32.8. 
Biblia Hebraic Quinta comments that verse 8 represents a deliberate emendation for theological motives is reasonably certain. The phenomenon of theological correctness was not something that happened in a half-hearted way. It required more than the convictions of an isolated scribe to have effected five further interrelated changes. Another scholar comments that the verse affirms that the God of Israel remains the only and unique God. He and he alone has set the limits of every nation. Thus this verse is not an expression of henotheism, but of monotheism. Another scholar comments that the plural sons appears to refer to the members of a divine court, presumably angelic beings, but certainly not gods. The eminent Emmanuel Tov wrote, in its probable original wording, the Song of Moses referred to an assembly of the gods. It appears that the scribe of an early text, now reflected in the Masoretic text, did not feel at ease with this polytheistic picture and replaced sons of El with the sons of Israel, thus giving the text a different direction by the change of a single word. And Semitic scholar Michael Heiser has written, The phrase sons of God comes from manuscripts of Deuteronomy found amongst the Dead Sea Scrolls, scrolls much older than the original Received text. The reference to Babel in Deuteronomy highlights an important point regarding this manuscript disagreement. The division of the nations at the Tower of Babel is connected to the Table of Nations of Genesis 10, which directly precedes it. The Table of Nations catalogues 70 nations but does not include Israel. Why? Because Israel did not exist at the time of the Babel event. This makes the reference to sons of Israel in Deuteronomy 32.8 illogical and unsustainable. Sons of God was most likely changed to sons of Israel sometime after the Jewish community in response to the new Christian church and its use of the Septuagint standardized the Hebrew text in the 2nd century A.D. So, has the scripture been changed? Well, yes and no. Yes, scribes sometimes, though rarely, altered a text for reasons that they believed to be good ones. In this case, they desired to defend monotheism, even though doing so introduced an anachronism. No. For the earlier wording of the text has been preserved both in translations and in older copies of the original text. In this case, the earlier form was always available in Greek and has been recovered in Hebrew at Qumran. Modern Bible translations that include ancient variant manuscript readings do so in an attempt to recover the Word of God more accurately, not to change the Word of God.